Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Nationals March to October. And this should be it if everything goes our way. We have had up to this point the greatest postseason run of all time, I'll say it. We've had some dominant wins, we've had some close wins, some come from behind wins, even a few really long extra innings wins. But the key similarity is that every single one has been a win. And now we sit here one more win away from not just a World Series victory, not just a repeat World Series ring, but a perfect 13-0 run through the postseason. Now normally when you have a 3-0 lead in a best of seven series, a lot of the pressure is kind of off by that game four. But that is not the case today because I want to make history. I want to go undefeated in this playoff run. And to do that, we got to make one more come from behind victory we're gonna be down one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth we have four innings of hitting to get the job done and they're starting us out with a runner on first it has been a total team effort throughout these playoffs everybody's had their moments everybody's contributing there's not one player that's just carrying us throughout and that's how we've done it and we only need to do it one more time so let's get into it, let's hop in, and let's clinch this World Series repeat at home. It's CJ Abrams up at the plate hitless somehow, even with a 450 average. The concerning thing though is it's Lance McCullers on the mound, and he has a lot of energy left. I do have a lot of trouble typically hitting Lance McCullers, but hopefully just as it's gone with everybody, I'm going to be able to wait him out, wait for my pitch, put some good swings on the ball, but let's see what we've got going so far in a one nothing game. It's one solo shot from Alex Bregman, that is the entirety of offense on both sides. We have three hits on the board, one from Lane Thomas, one from Ruiz, and one from Ahmed Rosario. Josiah Gray has gone six. He's punched out nine so far. Good game for him. We gotta turn it around. Can't let him lose with that line. And the bullpen situation is honestly not bad at all. For just having a 16 inning game, everybody is usable today. Meanwhile, on their side, some of their key arms, they are probably unusable, but both of them actually here, Ryan Stanek and Montero are the ones warming up. They're both under half energy. Go ahead, bring one of them in. We got to get McCullers out of this game then if that means we get to face somebody who doesn't have much in the tank. It's very tempting to want to try and steal with Ahmed Rosario here, but just don't know if I trust it. Oh, but I, I made him slide step and got a really good pitch to hit there and I was under it. Oh, no, I just missed that. I don't know if I thought it was the slider or something or if I was just under it, but timing was good. It was still hit pretty hard. All right, but now it's Mr. Clutch. Now it's even more tempting to want to try and steal second to actually get that clutch rating going. No, I, I need to stop thinking about that with a righty on the mound because Garcia's contact rating is like 88, 89. I think the clutch is only 91, so that's not much of a difference. He can still be Mr. Clutch when it's not the clutch rating. Or he can beat it right into the ground, into a double play, and we had absolutely nothing go our way that inning. That's not ideal. All right, well, Josiah Gray's got plenty left too, so we're going to keep this starting pitching duel going. I feel like it's kind of crazy with how clearly Josiah Gray was our ace last year, how he's now down to like the fourth pitcher in the rotation, but he's getting his 10th strikeout here in game four. He might be fourth in the rotation, but he's not pitching like it. I really am. I, I, I don't want to sit here and only talk about the future here as we're about to wrap up the World Series, but... Our starting rotation might be what I'm most excited for going forward in this March to October because everybody's young, everybody's got a good potential, and everybody's still got room to improve. Like, it is only going to get better. Come on, Garcia's there. All right, nice. Corey Lee's two for two? What? He's not going to be three for three. Lane Thomas is there. One, two, three inning for Gray in the seventh. We got to get something going. I don't want to wait until the ninth inning like we did in game two. Oh, no. And that's going to get caught, too. I thought maybe at least it'd tail foul. That's a hanger. 
Should have been all over it, but of course, once again, I'm slightly under. That one, I'm slightly under too, but it's carrying. What do we got? Matt Chapman, all right. Whew, I did not know if that had enough, but Matt Chapman ties this game. He's had some big swings this postseason, and there's another one. Hap? With Jordan out there, he's not gonna get there. That's gonna be a ground rule double. So we got a homer and now a double. That was another pitch to hit. I mean, I did hit it, but I just wish I would have gotten around on it and pulled it. We could have had back-to-back -back shots and taken the lead. Oh, and that's not gonna do anything. It's gonna keep him at second. I I feel like I have been struggling with Lane Thomas. Oh, that was ball four. <laughs> I was so concentrated on actually hitting the pitch, I forgot what the count was. And now it cheats. This is a pretty solid matchup. A lot of power if I can make a good swing. Oh, just early, just under it. I, I thought for a second there I did something. Oh, I might have still done something if that gets down. It's not. Oh, I thought I hit it just a little bit harder. All right, we tied it up. Came very close to taking the lead, but that's a good sign. 9-1-2 coming up. I plan on leaving Gray in at least for the two batters, because then after Altuve, we got that run of Bregman, Jordan, Tucker, who all hit lefties a little worse. There we go. Sit down, Yu Chang. 11 punch outs. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't throw a first pitch fastball right down the middle to Altuve. I think after that, and considering Bregman has the solo shot and another hit, I am going to go to the lefty here. We'll get Mantiply into this game here in the eighth inning. Hopefully he can go ahead and get us out of this inning in these next two batters. Maybe even one batter if I make a good pitch. Of course he takes off when I throw the circle change and we don't get him. All right, we got Bregman though. Now it's Jordan, and I'm pretty sure when I've seen the splits pop up before, even with those numbers in the postseason, he doesn't have a single hit against lefties. Oh, perfect pitch for strike two. Come on, one more. There we go, three pitch punch out to sit down Jordan. What a two batters face for Mansupply. Oh, come on Rosario, run, 89 speed. Ugh. You gotta come away with a base runner on a pitch like that. He's playing in. I hit that so hard. How is he able to knock that down? I feel like of all the Lance McCullers pitches, the only one I see well is the knuckle curve, and he keeps hanging the knuckle curve for me, and I haven't done anything. There's another one, and I... That is a beach ball. It is an absolute beach ball, and I just can't figure it out. There's another one, but that one's actually hit pretty well. Jordan's not getting there, but it's not getting out. That's another ground rule double. All right, I mean, we have the winning run in scoring position now with Joey Manessis coming up. I'm giving him the 3-0 green light. It's Joey Manessis. If I get something to hit, I'm hitting it. Okay, he kept it above the zone there, so puts him on. We ha They had a base open there, so it doesn't really help. It looks like we're getting a new arm, though, with Matt Chapman coming up. They're going to Ryan Stanek. I did not hit him very well when he pitched last game, but he does not have much energy. This might be a pretty good situation here. If I can, if I can sit fastball and I get a fastball, I got to take advantage of it. Okay, that, that was the fastball, but I'm not looking for it there. That's splitter territory. There it was. Okay, I jumped the gun a little bit. No, that wasn't the splitter. Even after it came in, I thought it was until it showed me that it was a fastball. Well, if we're going to win today, we're going to win the World Series on a walk-off. I don't see a reason to take Mantiply out yet, at least against Tucker. Oh, and there we go. Another three-pitch strikeout. Mantiply has been so dominant that I almost don't want to take him out now that the righties are coming up. I mean, Pena hits... Ah, he has lefties so much better, but Mantiply is on right now. I'm going to leave him in. I'm doing it. He's going to sit Pena down out in front of the sinker. Strike two to Abreu. Do we have one more? No, we don't. But it should... It's not going to be an out. It is? It's not! Ugh! Oh, 
Well, I don't know now. Now with Chaz McCormick up, he's pretty good against lefties too, and even worse against righties. I think, I think you gotta take him out here. We're going to Jordan Hicks. Almost, man, supply. He almost did it. Oh, don't do that to him. He can't hit that spot. Oh, he's actually gonna steal. We got him easy. We put the tag down. What? I got a perfect throw down to second, right? And the throw beat him by plenty anyway. How is he standing on second right now? Okay, this should get us out of it, and it does. We shouldn't have had to make that pitch and get that out, but we did. Now we're headed to the bottom of the ninth. I don't want to go to any more extras. Looks like they're going to stick with Stanek, which the amount of energy he has left kind of gives us a chance. Oh, what a pitch. The splitter up and away right on the corner. Ah, I mean, I chased, but you're not taking that on a 1-2 count. I made it just about as good of a swing as you could. Two outs, but we have a really good matchup here. K. Bear Ruiz against righties has pretty good power, and Stanek's got, like, nothing left. Oh, that was the pitch I was looking for, and I was too far out in front. Throw it again. Oh, he did throw it again, and that time I was late and under it. And for the second game in a row, we're heading to extras. There we go. We'll take it. Pop up right to Ruiz. Behind the plate is the first out. Abrams, I made the throw. And he made the throw. Nice play. That's right to Hap. Not the kind of contact you want to see, but it's the result we want. There's no way they're sticking with Ryan Stanek to start another inning with Sheets coming up. He has no energy. He's out. We got to do it right here. Come on, Sheets. Okay, it is going to get through. Why was he making nothing but good pitches when he's out of energy? Like, they were all... Right on the edge, he even threw a perfect backdoor slider at one point. I just don't understand what is wrong with the game. To bring in Stanek in the first place on such low energy, and now to be leaving him in with nothing? And he's still making pitches like that? Okay, game, you do realize he's out of energy, right? Why is he making perfect pitches? Okay, we'll take the walk. We got the winning run on second now, and now that we do, I think is where I bring the speed in, and they're still leaving Stanek in. What are they doing? Kiermaier with his 84 speed, gonna be on second base. All it should take is a base hit to bring him in. It's very tempting to want to lay down a sack bunt, move him up to third with one out, but Abrams is too good to take the bat out of his hands right now. But he popped it up. That was right down the middle. Okay. Mr. Clutch then, Luis Garcia. Of course, he's going to come through, right? Come on, give him something to hit. Don't don't get all wild now. How is he still in this game? I don't understand. Okay, 3-1 count. I'd be fine with another walk. I'd move the winning run up to third. And there it is. Base is loaded. One out. Cannot hit a ball on the ground, and they are still leaving Ryan Stanek in. He's at 39 pitches. He's been out of energy for like the last 20. He could just walk me in to win this World Series. Could you imagine that? Has a World Series ever ended on a walk-off walk? That's a 2-0 count. There's a 3-0 count. I am putting the controller down, and I'm ready to celebrate. Come on, what do we got here? Stanek, he walked him. A four-pitch walk with the bases loaded is how we're wrapping up our undefeated postseason run. I don't know if it can get any more anticlimactic than that, but we did it. Another extra innings win, a 13-0 run. Starting in the best of three wild card series all the way through the World Series without losing a game. And we had some good ones. Like I said at the beginning, we had some dominant wins. We had some come from behind wins. We had a few epic, long, extra innings wins. Plenty of walk-offs. This season 
This postseason had everything. A walk-off walk. I mean, come on. And the scary thing is, is we've won the first two World Series rings of this March to October, and this team is still getting better. Like, we have so many guys still improving. Like I said earlier in the game, all of our pitchers still have a lot of room to improve. We are at the start of a dynasty here. And I don't know, do you extend that back to 2019? Probably not, because this is a completely different team at this point. But Dave Martinez, the manager, he's won all three. And there we go. Just like that, it's over. Season two of the Nationals March to October has come to a conclusion with another World Series victory. Season one, we were long shots. Season two, we were underdogs. I have to imagine that by next season, we'll be considered either contenders or favorites. I still don't know what was going on there at the end. Like, why did they leave Stanek in? And before we hit continue in franchise, let's take one last look at our postseason stats here from our perfect 13-0 run. CJ Abrams led the team in hits while having, I mean, 10 less at-bats than Manessis and, what was that be, 17 less at-bats than Hap? He went 0 for though in game 4, so his average dropped under 400. We had a 5 homer postseason from Manessis, 3 from Chapman and Hap, couple from Thomas, couple big ones from Sheets, and then even Ruiz, Rosario, Abrams, Garcia, Kiermaier, Alfaro got in on it. The only position player that we didn't get into a game throughout the postseason run was Alex Call. And obviously you can't forget about the pitching because this, this might have even been the most important part more than the hitters. Snell made some really good starts. I think he got hit around in the first one, but after that, I don't really remember him doing anything bad. Cade Cavalli, under a one ERA, even a Doan. He had that one start where I think he only got two outs and gave up six, but overall he put up pretty good numbers. I mean, look at the strikeout to walk ratios on everybody. The bullpen came up huge. I mean, Jordan Hicks giving us some big innings. He got four wins in this run. Efros with three saves and two wins, 10 innings with no walks and 15 punch outs. Strasburg, nine of maybe the biggest innings because they all came in extra innings. We had three different extra innings games that we brought him in and he pitched multiple innings in each one. Didn't give up a single run and I think only gave up three base runners. And then the only pitcher we didn't get into a game was Mackenzie Gore. But now let's go ahead, let's hit continue and franchise so we can see some of the stuff we can't see in March to October, mainly just the awards. And yeah, I, I actually don't think there is anything besides the awards that we need to look at from this screen. So let's just go into it. Let's just see what we got here. I think it's going to start with postseason MVP. I think that's what usually pops up first. I guess I should make my guesses, right? I usually do that. They never give postseason or World Series MVP to pitchers, even though most of the time it probably should. I actually don't know. I bet postseason MVP as a whole goes to Manessis. Maybe World Series MVP goes to Abrams, but he did... He did go 0 for in that last game, and I think only went 1 for 4 in game 3, so maybe not. I don't know. Let's just see. I, I also don't have any guesses for regular season MVP. I don't think any of our guys won it, and I don't remember who the big players in the regular season were on other teams. Maybe Acuna? He probably did good. He always does good. Let's see. Postseason MVP. No, it's World Series MVP first, and it is... CJ Abrams with a 353 average and a bomb. Let's see who the postseason MVP was. It was also Abrams. Now to the regular season awards. The MVP of the National League was Manessis again, and Adone was runner up. Are you serious? I don't know, man. I, I mean, I don't really think we can do much going back and looking at other contenders, but I mean, Manessis, he took a dip from last year and I, I wasn't even prepared for him to win it last year, I remember. I mean, could this is kind of a crazy thought for real life. Like he's, he's going to be 32 next season. You got to imagine not too far into his career, he's going to fall off and not put up the same numbers, but would he have enough time to have a hall of fame career like with two mvps under his belt but i feel like with his age even if he gets two 200 hits a season he might not get to 2000 career i don't know interesting interesting thought there and a don't does this mean he's gonna win cy young also let's go to that before we check the other league mvp 
He did. Wow. I do remember looking at the pictures that there was a lot of contenders, I thought. Very interesting that Johanna Doan walks away with the hardware. We have the MVP winner and the Cy Young Award winner in the same season that we repeat as World Series champs, and we've still yet to win a division title. How about the AL MVP? It's Jose Ramirez. Trout's not even on the list. Okay. He finally did it. He finally broke through and won it. Cy Young goes to Dylan Cease. Cease had a 387 ERA. See, that's the thing. I think pitching as a whole on this game offline needs an update because nobody's throwing 232 innings and nobody's winning the Cy Young Award with a 387 ERA. They put way too much weight in that win-loss record. What's next here? We got the batting title goes to Harper with a 348 average. Eloy wins it in the AL. Reliever of the year. We didn't have anybody up there. Hater won it. And then Duran won it in the AL. Rookie of the year went to Francisco Alvarez. Okay. That kind of threw me off because both him and Ellie De La Cruz are rookies this year in real life, but they had an extra year before getting called up in the game. AL Rookie of the Year was Garrett Doyle. Of course it was, but yeah, he was that draft pick you remember back to last season that I passed up on because we got some bad info from the scouts and he was 18 years old at a 79 overall with I think 99 potential and yeah he turned in a really solid rookie season I mean if this is going to be his worst season and he's only going to get better watch out next we're looking at the Hank Aaron award and Harper wins that one I Manessis is, isn't even on the board here and this is for the best hitter so how is he the MVP it's not like he provides anything in the field most of the time he's DHing and then in the AL it was Trout I knew he had a good year 47 homers and then we're just on to the gold gloves so let's rock it through these see if we got anybody in contention I don't see anybody yet we're on to the outfield and oh this threw me off but I guess Manessis is a primary right fielder, even though he has never played an inning in right field in this March to October. We're going to see Silver Sluggers next, and Manessis won for DH. That's funny how he can finish runner-up in gold glove for outfield, but then win the Silver Slugger for DH. Catcher, it was JT again. Ruiz wasn't even on the list. I'm surprised. Nobody for first... So Manessis doesn't qualify for that one. Luis Garcia repeats as the Silver Slugger second baseman. Nice. Third base, we didn't... I, I didn't, Okay, I mean, yeah, that's probably better than Chapman. I thought Chapman would be on the list at least. Adamus wins for short. And then the outfield, we didn't get anybody. All right. And then it's just back to postseason MVP. So we took home some hardware this year. MVP, Cy Young. And then it was a couple silver sluggers, Manessis and Garcia. And then obviously the postseason World Series MVPs. And that is where we can go ahead and bring this episode to a close and bring season two of the march to october to a close i think last time after we finished a season i took about a week break i don't really plan on doing that this time but i also can't say for sure i probably should have planned it out beforehand but don't be surprised if there's a couple days that there isn't a new March to October because I, I might take a break and focus on other videos or I might just get right back into it. I don't know. But either way, the next episode will be at least part one of the off season and it's an off season that I'm really looking forward to. But for now, that's where we bring this one to a close. So as always, if you enjoyed, hit that like button for me. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button because we are nowhere near done with this nationals march to october this dynasty so guys thanks for watching again not just for this episode but for this season and i will see you in the next one